How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for pharmacology for step one. Very similar question shows up on the NBME assessments. Whip through the answer choices, tell you the high points you need to know. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M E H L M A N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. Six, seven year old man, cranium 2.2. He has a history of hypertension treated with hydrochlorothiazide. Battles are normal. Physical exam shows mild super pubic tenderness. Question wants to know which of the following medications should most likely be avoided in this patient? So normal creatinine 0 0.7, 1.2. Once you've hit a creatinine of 2, you've lost 90% of your renal function. So he has very, very poor renal function here. The relevance of the hypertension with hydrochlorothiazide uh, in this question, non-existent, just a filler detail. The superpubic tenderness means urinary retention. This is overflow incontinence. It's a, it's a descriptor you have somebody likes for 2CK. You're going to insert a catheter as the next best step. And they also want you to know for step one that they'll ask the mechanism for a high creatinine in this patient and the answer is increased bowman capsule hydrostatic pressure they really like that okay so you need to know that old dude plus high creatinine is bph till proven otherwise very important so which medication should most likely be avoided let's just whip the answer choice here we'll go backwards choice that for optimal wrong fucking answer non-dihydropyridine Calcium channel blocker, axon, nodal calcium channels can be used for rate control, nature of fibrillation. The highest point about this drug is that it causes constipation. That's asked on family medicine forms. They really like that. Don't confuse with the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, such as nifedipine and lodipine, which act on peripheral arterioles and cause fluid retention slash peripheral edema. Wrong fucking answer. So I see Tamsulosin, wrong answer. This is actually a treatment for this guy, okay? We, we'd want to give him Tamsulosin or Terezosin alpha-1 blockers, okay? So those are treatments for BPH, in addition to the fact that he has hypertension. So that's a very suitable drug for this guy. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, Luprolide, wrong answer. Obviously, we're not going to use it in the setting of BPH, but uh, you need to know that it's not contraindicated in this guy overall. Luprolide, what they want you to know for USMLE is that it's a GnRH receptor agonist that when given continuously will cause downregulation of LH and FSH. Okay? It actually has use in prostatic adenocarcinoma. That's more of a lengthy discussion I don't want to go down into right now. It can also be used for OBSGYN stuff like fibroids, adenomyosis, although never an answer on OBSGYN for that stuff. It's more just those are theoretical use cases. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, finasteride, wrong answer. Uh, another treatment for this guy for BPH. So 5-alpha reductase inhibitor preventing the conversion of testosterone to DHT. The DHT normally stimulates prostate growth. So by decreasing DHT, we can help uh, mitigate the progression of the BPH. But as I just articulated before, Tamsulis and Terezosin would probably be more suitable over finasteride if we had to choose one or the other for this guy because he has the hypertension. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diphenhydramine, correct answer. So first generation H1 blockers such as diphenhydramine, chlorpheniramine have nasty anticholinergic side effects and they are absolutely avoided in patients who have urinary retention or risk of urinary retention. Okay, they're anticholinergic, anti-dumbbells. So dumbbells, the mnemonic that refers to all the pro-cholinergic side effects. So diarrhea, urination, meiosis, which is pupillary constriction, bradycardia, bronchoconstriction, excitation, neuromuscular, lacrimation, salivation, sweating. So anti-dumbbells is the opposite, anticholinergic. So not diarrhea, but constipation. Not urination, but urinary retention. Not meiosis, but medriasis, etc. Medriasis, pupillary dilatation. So we want to avoid anticholinergics in elderly, uh, especially got BPH to avoid the urinary retention, but elderly because anticholinergics can also cause cognitive dysfunction, exacerbate dementia, cause delirium. Okay, so we don't like anticholinergic medications in elderly. TCAs we want to avoid. So the three classes of drugs that have nasty anticholinergic side effects are the first generation H1 blockers, TCAs such as amitriptyline, and antipsychotics. Real quick, chloramphenicol, wrong fucking answer. So 50S ribosomal sub inhibitor, pretty much a non-existent drug on USMLE. I mean, there's all these fancy things that we could talk about, like gray baby syndrome, etc. USMLE doesn't give a fuck. Okay, so very 
overrated drug in terms of its uh, presence and resources over the years? Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.